Hello everyone, it's Kat and I'm back today to revisit the Naked palette. So if you haven't heard the news, Urban Decay have announced that this is coming back for a limited time. Uh, so the Urban Decay Naked palette, this was a very popular palette like 10 years ago. Um, it, from my memory anyway, it was the thing that made palettes cool. So at that time, People were buying singles, like I know the mats, the MAC singles were really popular. Um, people were buying duos, um, maybe the biggest you'd go is like a quad, and then the build your own palettes are really popular as well. But these sort of pre-made palettes, they weren't really a huge thing. It was the Naked palette that made it very popular, and it was probably the most po popular palette for the longest time. So many brands duped it, um, and it sort of really sparked the whole love affair of eyeshadow palettes. So this is something that for me is quite nostalgic, but it also has survived a lot of declutters because I actually still think it's pretty good. I have to put on the screen when it was actually discontinued but um, since then I know that there's a new generation of makeup users that are coming in they might not have really been exposed to this so in this video I'm going to swatch this so you can see it I'm also going to apply some of my favorite shades and just have a bit of a trip down memory lane all right nice close-up of the palette I'm going to do arm swatches I do want to point out that they have announced that they're updating the formula of this so I have seen swatches and it looks very similar to this one. It's just that they've updated the formula. Whatever that means, I don't think it's super improved. I think it's probably just in line with their other eyeshadows. Um, but I do have thoughts about that. Okay, the first one is Virgin. This is sort of like a satin pinky cream. It's very light. It doesn't have much of a color, like a shine to it. This is Sin, which is a soft pink. It's got a little bit of peachiness to it. Uh, again, not super bold. The first matte is Naked, which is sort of just a, it's a cooler tone brown. It's quite sheer, but you can build it up slightly. Sidecar is my personal fave. It's one of the most metallics. It's like a, just a metallic nude with sort of, looks like gold sparkle in it, like really soft champagne gold sparkle, but you can see it's a lot more metallic than the other shades. Then we have Buck, which is the only other matte. It is slightly deeper than Naked. There we go. Half Baked is the gold. Compared to the other shades, this does look really bold. It looks like a nice yellow gold. Um, compared to other yellow golds on the market, it's a little bit more muted, but it's very pretty. Smog is a beautiful bronze. So this is, again, a bit more of a metallic bronze. Um, it's a sort of slightly warmer brown. I really like it. I think it's gorgeous. Dark Horse is very dark. This again has that almost satin finish. You could probably use this as a dark matte, but it does have a little bit of a like a gold shimmer in it, as you can see. Uh, and then we have Smog, which to me, no, Toasted. We've got Toasted, which is a darker pinky nude. It's really pretty. Uh, I think it sort of would work better in this bunch here. Uh, it seems like it's out of place over there, but it's a very pretty metallic pinky nude. The last three are quite dark um, and these are all shimmer. We've got Hustle, which is more of a smoky purple brown. Uh, I didn't use these ones too much. So they are a little bit drier just simply because I think they haven't been, the pan hasn't been agitated, but you can build it up. But it is like yeah, a little bit purple toned. Creep is this, I don't like it. It's like a dark brownie gray matte with what looks like silver shimmer in it. It's probably the, my least favorite shade of the bunch. And then we have gunmetal, which is a blue metallic gunmetal shade. So again, this shows you that at the time it was sort of like pinky light nudes, a bit of gold, and then sort of more smoky cooler toned but they all like they all perform quite nicely uh, some do take some building up but that's okay I think this is the worst one um, but it might have dried out over the years but other otherwise it's quite a standard palette um, so my thoughts on the formula changing I would say that it <laughs> implies that the palette is going to be around a bit longer than they're saying why would you reformulate if you were going to just have this as a very small release 
So I think this is going to be a bit around a bit longer than they're saying. Um, it is also rolling out to different countries and different stockers. So I'll have some information on the screen. So if you wanted this uh, in the updated version, you can get it. My question, it looks like the packaging is also the same. If you're going to update the formula, like why not get rid of this felt packaging that people have like complained about forever? But to be fair, mine has held up pretty well over the years. So um, there we go. Just as a quick comparison, I've got two shades from the Glaminatrix um, Barely Basic palette. Uh, I just thought I'd show you what we're sort of used to with the formulations and the finishes these days. So this is one of their standard shimmers. It is so different. Holy moly. Look at that. Oh my god. Uh, and then this is like a topper shade. Look, there's obviously a market. It's very basic. But this is what I'm talking about. Eyeshadows have come a long way. I would reach for this any day of the week and this sort of gets forgotten, which is exactly what's happened, but I still think it's a nice basic palette, but golly gee whiz. If you want to see my review of this palette, I'll have it in the description box. So when I was getting into makeup and watching YouTube videos, these two shades were super popular. These were very frosty shades and it was everything that the, I don't know, the YouTube beauty gurus were wearing um that wear one all over the lid one in the inner corner for me it was always way too frosty i didn't like that what i really liked was this shade here so this one is sidecar this has a little bit more depth to it i also really like the gold and i also really loved smog smog was beautiful so these were the three that i liked i also didn't mind this if i wanted to go a little bit pink um, one thing you'll notice about this and you probably noticed from the swatches is that there's it's a very shimmer heavy but the shimmers aren't like exciting shimmers the one that's the most sort of twinkly is sidecar all right i'm just going to start with sidecar it picks up really nicely it's very soft i'm going to use a tiny little dinky mirror in here very sad little mirror um and yeah it's, oh, i still love this color i'm not gonna lie it's like the perfect sort of cool tone shade these sort of taupey shades were really popular around then and what was really interesting is that mattes weren't a big thing so there's two mattes in this palette which is such a low percentage of mattes uh mattes became a much bigger thing a bit later on and then you'd see more of the like really matte heavy palettes like the anastasia beverly hills modern renaissance i think they had like two or three shimmers and the rest were mattes so it sort of did a big flip um this was also around the era where people would take the frosty color and put it up at their brow bone i thought that was hideous but that was the trend. You can see this actually, like, again, there's, there's really not much to it. Like, it looks really subtle, but it applies really nicely and it just, it does work. It, it, it really does work. I'm going to deepen this up a little bit. I'm going to go in with some smog because I loved smog. When I got into sort of browns, smog was just, it was there for me. This palette can go from day to night. It can get you some sort of smoky looks. I get why it was such a popular thing. It does seem really lackluster, but I get that this is not really impactful and all that interesting, but it's such an easy everyday palette. Like this is work makeup to a T. Um, I have seen people like complain that they never bothered with this because the formula was bad. I actually don't think the formula was bad. I think the finishes aren't interesting, but the formula holds up. Like this formula is nice. It's buttery. Easy to pick up, not much fallout, lays on the eye really nicely. Like, yeah, super basic, but sometimes you want a really super basic look. Like, this is the makeup. I would put this in my bag if I was just, like, having a makeup bag for the office. Like, this is office makeup. I'm going to probably go in with the two mattes. So we have Naked and Buck. Just on a fluffy brush, I'm going to just take that into the crease. This was a lot more cool tone than I remember. And it was around the time where cool tones were really popular. Um, I feel like it was the sort of Jaclyn Hill orange eyeshadow and the Morphe collab that made sort of really warm eyeshadows popular. Because Urban Decay, like their second palette, was a cooler version of this. Like it had a lot more greys. It had black in it. Um, so this, I would call sort of a neutral palette. A lot of people these days are like craving cooler tone eyeshadow palettes and they're just not, brands aren't really coming out with them. But this one, I would say for me anyway, it looks quite cool toned on me. Just taking a little bit of buck just to deepen that a little bit. These were my favorite shades by far. And I'm just delving into what I really liked. 
I do also want to demonstrate half baked because again that was one of my favorite golds um, and it is a warmer gold for sure but again it's not super yellow you can often find golds these days that are super super yellow they can be a bit jarring this one is a nice warm but it's a, when applied it almost looks a little bit champagne-ish but you can definitely warm up a look with it and it does it's nice I like these look this has survived declutters for a reason. Whenever I start using it, I'm like, oh, it's so practical. Granted, I'd probably only use half the palette, but it's still very nice. So again, this is really soft look. There's not much sparkle going on. The shimmers are more of a muted sort of soft shimmer, but they're pretty. I'm gonna do a bit of liner, a bit more mascara, and I'm gonna tell you just, should, do you need this? All right, so this is the look with a little bit of brown liner, a little bit more mascara. It is super simple. It is super simple, but that's what you get from the Naked palette. Look, I don't hate this look. Is it anything groundbreaking? Absolutely not, but it's very flattering, very easy to apply, and I get the appeal of this. I get it. I get why I kept it. I understand. Now, would I recommend this palette to people if you'd never picked it up before, if you're sort of new to the makeup industry and you missed out on this, uh, would I recommend it? My answer would be, look, yes to some people and no to others. Um, I think this is a perfect palette. Like this would be a palette that if my mum or my sister wore eyeshadows often, which I don't, this would be great for them. They're not makeup enthusiasts. They don't want to see the next like the coolest thing. They, it's not about like a twinkly texture or duochrome or anything interesting. It's very, very practical. Um, this is also for that makeup user that's more inclined to just put like a wash of color all over the lid um, and not really worry about like really crafting looks because you don't have the ability to really um, intensify looks with deeper mattes. Like you can obviously use these in the outer corner and to deep up, deepen up a look, but I just feel like it's a bit limiting with the majority of it being this sort of slightly shimmery um, effect. So I feel like basic makeup users that might want to just run a little bit of a dark color on the lash line when they're smoking out a liner, uh, it would be fine. They want something on the inner corner. Yes, it's a bit chalky looking. It's not my preference. I like something that's a little bit more um, either sparkly or something that's a little bit more wet look sort of metallic. Um, you know, it is, it's very basic. So for that type of makeup user, I think this would be such a practical, easy palette for them to use. However, here's my disclaimer. The price point of it is far too much for what you're getting in this market. You can get things these days which with much more interesting formulations, a better balance of mattes and shimmers and whatever you need um, at the same or better quality. Um, because this is such an old formula, it's been trumped many times. So I think the price that they're going to be asking for, which from what I understand is quite high, um, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Other group of people actually that I would recommend it to is if you were a big fan of the Naked Palette and it reminds you of a certain era that makes you feel really happy. So for example, I think I bought this in my mid 20s so for me it brings back a bit of nostalgia and if you are searching for that maybe you want to buy it but I still love it I think it still think it's a great practical palette but I do think the price point they're asking for in this day and age it's it's probably not worth it so I probably wouldn't recommend it no matter how much I still love mine and I'm still going to hold on to mine I just probably wouldn't buy a fresh one if that makes sense because there's better things out there let me know what you think about the Naked palette do you still have yours um are you considering buying a fresh one or buying one from scratch because you've never had one um let me know I think it's an interesting thing that they're bringing it back I sort of expected them to do it to be fair um it is such an iconic palette that um, when they announced that it was going away, I didn't actually think it was going to be going forever. Um, so I think they're going to periodically probably bring it back. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Let me know what your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to have a chat to you. And a big thank you to my members for supporting this channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.